completed analysis of the California Chamber of Commerce's Job Killer Bill program after the conclusion of the 2023 California legislative session. Now, the Cal Chamber is uh, known for its annual job killer designation. It also has a job creator category as well. This program has been in existence just over a quarter century. So I wanted to update my analysis of how bills have fared with the job killer designation during the past five gubernatorial administrations. So let's take a look at it. You know, the first year that job killer bills were identified was in 1997, the second to the last year of Governor Pete Wilson's tenure as governor. That year, Cal Chamber identified 57 job killer bills. Of those 57 bills, only nine made it to the governor's desk and Governor Wilson vetoed all nine of the bills. In this most recent year, which is the fifth year of Governor Gavin Newsom's tenure, Cal Chamber identified 19 job killer bills, which ironically was the same as last year. Of those 19 bills identified, seven made it to his desk, which is the most in the last 14 years. Governor Newsom signed four and vetoed three of those seven job killers. You know, there was only one year, 2000, more than two decades ago now, when there were no job killer bills identified. So looking at some overall statistics, through the 2023 California legislative session, the total number of job killer bills identified over the past 27 years, 843. Of the total number of job killer bills identified during those uh, 27 years, the total number of job killers that failed to reach the desk of the governor were 669 which is 79.4 of all of them. Of the total number of job killer bills identified over the last 27 years, the, the number that have reached the governor's desk, 174, which amounts to 20.6%. Now, of those 174 job killers that reached the governor's desk uh, during those past uh, 27 years, the number of job killer bills that were signed by the governor, 62, which is 35.6%. And so of the total number of job killers that reached the governor's desk over the last 27 years, the number that were vetoed, 112, which is a 65.4% veto rate. Looking at some of the highest and lowest stats, the highest number of job killers identified in a single year 64 of them in 1998 when Governor Wilson was in office. The lowest number of job killer bills identified in a single year, 12, that was in 2001 under Governor Davis. The highest number of job killer bills to get to the governor's desk in a single year was 17 in 2002, also with Governor Davis. The lowest number of job killer bills to get to the governor's desk in a single year was one, and that happened twice, both during Governor Brown's second tenure in 2013 and 2018. The highest number of uh, job killer bills that were signed in a single year, 12 in 2002 by Governor Davis. The lowest number of job killer bills signed in a single year was zero. That happened most recently in 2018 under Governor Brown. It happened in three years under Governor Schwarzenegger, 2009, 2007, and 2004. And the two years uh, under Governor Wilson, where the job killer program was in effect, 1997 and 1998. The highest number of job killer bills vetoed in a single year was 12. It happened in 2007 by Governor Schwarzenegger. And the lowest number of job killer bills vetoed in a single year was zero. It happened three times in 2022 by Governor Newsom, in 2014 and 2013 under Governor Jerry Brown in the second tenure. So that's my brief look at the 2000 and uh, 2023 uh, bills. 
uh, acted on by Governor Newsom in the Job Killer Program, and also just a little bit of uh, general statistics for the 27 years that the Cal Chamber Job Killer Program was in effect, as well as some of the highest and lowest stats over the last five uh, gubernatorial administrations that have been a part of the Cal Chamber Job Killer Program. 